You ready, Houston? Houston, yeah. we got problems. You ready? Okay, it's telling you here, 424. I'm talking to you, Houston. And by the way, your name was, you changed your name to Omar? Yeah, that's my Muslim name now. What was your name that was given to you by your parents? Um, Ashton. Ashton, yeah. Because you need to change your name. Omar is a terrible name. It's the second caliph who led expeditions to conquer lands and to subjugate people to Islam. Omar bin al khattab Anyway, chapter 4, verse 24, and they did this when they conquered land. Okay. It's telling you the people you can't have sex with. Are you ready? Yeah. Also forbidden are women already married. You can't have sex with a married woman, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Because that would be what? Adultery. But it says, except those captives and slaves whom your right hand possess. Do you understand what that means? So you cannot have sex with someone that's married. But if they're a slave or captive, you can? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you got it. You're a genius. But what if that slave or captive is married? That's what it's saying. You can have sex with them. They're your property. Oh. Uh. So the married woman you can have sex with. It's a married woman you've taken. Okay, now let me show you the hadith. Right? You understand what I mean, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm picking it up. Okay, I'm going to show you what that means. You didn't get it. it means that if the Muslims attack your area, they your mother captive, they can have sex with them and sell her off. You okay with that? Uh, No. Because that's what the Muslims are doing. In Muslim lands, that's what they're doing. I'm giving you right in the screen. This is Sahih. Do you see it? It's a Sahih. Let me enlarge it. Sahih means it's sound. It is authentic. Weak, it's not fault. Okay, watch it. You see it? Sahih. Right? Sahih. Mm -hmm. Al Albani. I'm going to give everyone the link. Right. Eddie, we got it. If it's a problem, go to hell. We already know that it picks up in his phone. Either live with it or leave, guys. That's the best we can do. The guy just tells you he doesn't have a computer. All right, now, you see on the screen? I'm going to send you this in private chat. The link. Okay. You with me there? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing it on your screen. Okay. Abu Sayyid al Khudri said, The Apostle of Allah sent the military expedition to Altas, the agent of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captive. You see, they took them captive, right? Yep. Some of the companions of Apostle Allah were reluctant to have relations with the female captains. Why? Because of their pagan husbands. So Allah exalted and now the Quranic verse, all married women are forbidden to you. Save those captives whom your right hand possesses. This is to say that they're lawful for them when they complete their waiting period to make sure they're not pregnant for So this Quran is saying that if you do jihad, they do jihad in Syria. They do jihad in Iraq, they do jihad in Nigeria, they do jihad in Afghanistan, and they take women captive. They can have sex with captive women even if they're married and their husbands are still alive. Gemma, you don't like it? Get out of here, please. Everyone else, can you hear? So if the Muslims attack your place and they take your mother captive and they have sex with her, are you okay with following this religion? Well, To be honest, does my opinion really matter when it comes to? Well, yeah. If you're not, if you're a sick bastard, yes, because you're telling me if they take your mother and rape her, your opinion doesn't matter. So you think you, God would have your mother raped? Then no. Because the Bible says to pray to God, and God has written law in your heart to convict you. So unless you're that demonized, if you're a sick bastard, that you're okay with jihadi taking your mother and then sleeping with her and selling her off in front of your bed. Then, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not okay with that. So what do you mean, does your opinion matter? God created you in his image, wrote the law in your heart, to convict you with. So if you're okay with it, Muhammad's God is okay with it. I'm not okay with it. So why are you still a Muslim? I don't know. 
Why did you make the mistake and follow us out? I don't know. Exactly. Let me ask you another question. Would you be okay with a religion that sanctions and permits marrying pre pubescent minors who haven't had their periods, haven't reached monarchy, and they're premature? Mm, no. Do you even hesitate? So do you, do you have like an eight-year-old, six-year-old sister? I have a three-year-old sister. Okay. Would you be okay if if your sister was around eight, nine years old and a Muslim man married her and had sex with her? I'd not be okay with that. But Muhammad did that. Do you feel okay with that? Are you okay with Muhammad doing here? Aisha. All you do is search for Aisha. Boom. It takes a while. Now, here you go. Here it is. I'm going to give you the link for everyone else. I'm going to show you. It's in the Quran. So it's time for you to leave us. Anyway, here's the link for you right here. All you do is put Aisha 9. You see it says Sahih. Sahih. Right here, right? You see it, right? Yeah. Sunan Nasai, volume 4, book 26, 22. This is a Muslim website. It was narrated that Abu Ubaidah said, Aisha said the Messenger of Allah married me when I was nine, and I lived with him for nine years. She was 18 when he died. You know how old Muhammad was? Around 50. 54. And you knew this, huh? Yes. And you knew Muhammad married nine year old? He's still a Muslim? Yes. You know, I want to say shame on you, right? I, I just told myself that it was 1,400 years ago. and Yeah, but the Quran says they can do it till this day. It's in the Quran, 65 or 4. That's why in Muslim countries, they are marrying minors. Even right. if it's 1,400 years ago, does God not know it's harmful to take a 9-year-old and deflower her with her physiological and emotional trauma if their bodies have not matured yet? Because the body has to reach what's called menarche, where their bones are fully calcified and hips have fully formed. Otherwise, you're going to do irreparable damage. But physically, didn't God know that? God should have known that, yes. So why did he have, supposedly, the greatest prophet, the greatest man, then not only allow pedophilia, but then marry a nine-year-old and then leave her as a woman at the age of 18 and she could never remarry till she died? Messed up. And yet you, you know this and you still follow us now. Here, Sal Bukhari. This is their most authentic collection. Sal Bukhari, volume 7, Hadith 64. Narrated Aisha. The prophet married her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old. She remained with him for nine years. But, but you already knew this. I didn't need to prove it. Right? Mm -hmm. So why are you following You're going to follow Muhammad, the pedophile, pervert, murderer, who kissed the black skull like a pig, but then reject the true Jesus who you don't even know enough about? Let me show you that Islam. Are you ready? I'm going to give it to you for First, I'm going to link to my article. And then I'm going to give you the Muslim. Here it is. More on Islamic pedophilia. And I'm going to give you a link to the Muslim website, Salafi website that quotes Sunni scholars. Guys, here's my article, but in it, I link to the actual here now. So you're following this pedophile, huh? Okay, now watch here. Right here, you click, and what do you find? I'm going to show you. The actual Muslim website, right here. I ha I link it right there. Oh, there it is. This is Islam question and premier Salafi website. Giving you authentic answers. So you want to see what it says about marrying young girls who have not mature, matured? On acting. Yeah, want you want to hear what they say? Yes. All right. And after this, man, if you don't have to, I don't know what to tell you. Watch here. Secondly, you see it right here? Secondly, you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me enlarge it for the rest of the day. Marrying a young girl before she reaches the age of adolescence is permitted in Sharia. You see it, guys? 
But wait, let's go on. Indeed, it was narrated that there was not only consensus on this point. Allah says, not look the verse that I quote, 65 verse 4. This is the verse that says, you can marry minors who haven't menstruated and divorce them, and then they can be remarried after three months. This is what this verse is about. Chapter 65 verse 4, Surah Al-Talaq, Talaq. And those of your women, as I've passed the age of monthly courses, for them the idda, meaning the waiting period before they get married, if you have doubt, it's three months. And for those who have no courses, why? If they're immature, who have not menstruated yet. Them, yahidna, their waiting period is three months like that. So then now, let's see how the Muslims interpret us, how the Muslims interpret us, companions interpret it. In this verse, we see that Allah has made in the case of divorce of a girl who does not have periods. A girl who does not have periods. Why? Because she is young and has not yet reached puberty. Three months. You can have sex with her divorce and she waits three months to be remarried. This clearly indicates that Allah has made this a valid marriage. You're okay with this religion? No. Sanctioning pedophilia? No. So are you a Muslim, dude? I don't know. And here, let me show you the example they give. Guess what example they give of a minor who had that period was married at night, Aisha. It was narrated from Aisha that the Prophet married her when she was six years old. He consummated marriage with her when she was nine. He stayed with them for nine years. Married by Bukhari Muslim. The Prophet married Aisha when she was six years old and consummated the marriage. You see it? Mm hmm. Now, the fact that it is permissible to marry a young girl does not mean that it's permissible to have intercourse with her. Now, guess, watch how disgusting it gets. Now, guys, boys and girls, if you have kids, it's time to send them away. You didn't want them to hear this. Okay? Send them away. It's going to get disgusting. Do you know what Islam teaches, young man? Um, well, I do now. No, but you know what it says about... Now, I want you to mute me right now because I want to talk about it. And I'll tell you when to mute. Okay, good. You know what Islam teaches, folks? I want you to hear this. Islam says, Islam says that you can marry a minor, but you cannot have sex with her if she can't handle full penetration. So if she is seven, eight, you can marry her. But if she cannot handle you penetrating her, then what you can do is use your male organ to play with her and her body part without penetrating. But when she's nine, you can then fully penetrate. That's the only condition in Islam. And I'm going to show it to you right here. Right here. Rather, that should not be done until she's able for it. Able for it. For that reason, the Prophet delayed the consummation of his marriage with Aisha. In other words, Muhammad would have bunged her if she was six, but she couldn't handle penetration. So he had to wait three more years, when nine, and then he fully penetrated her. El Nawawi said, with regard to the wedding party of a young married girl at the time of consummated marriage, if the husband and the guard of the girl agree upon something that will not cause harm to the young girl, then it then may be done. Okay, well, she's too young, she can't help her, but you can play with her. If they disagree, then Ahmed and Abu Ubaid said, that once a girl reaches the age of nine, then the marriage may be consummated even without her consent. But that does not apply in the case of who is younger. You guys understand what we're reading here? It's saying before nine, before nine, don't penetrate if it's going to hurt her and she can't handle it. Play with her, rub her, massage her with your male organ. Once she's nine, it doesn't matter. Why? Because Aisha was nine when Muhammad penetrated her. That's what it's saying here. That's uh, right there in front of your eyes, Islamic website. Malik, and these are Muslim scholars. Malik, there's a school, a madhab, Maliki. Al-Shafi'i, that's another one of the imams that have schools named after, after them. And Abu Hanifa, you have the Hanafi, Maliki, and Shafi'i. There are Islamic schools of jurisprudence named after these three. And they all say this. The marriage may be consummated when the girl is able 
for intercourse. Did you catch it? Which varies from one girl to another. So no age limit can be set. See it? All right. This is the correct view. The correct view. There's nothing in the Hadith of Aisha to set an age limit. She can be as young as six or seven, dude. You understand? Muslims. There is nothing in the Hadith of Aisha to set an age limit or to forbid that in the case of a girl who's able for it before the age of nine. See, if she can handle penetration before nine, you cannot stop a Muslim man. Or to allow in the case of a girl who's not able for it and has reached the age of nine. El Dawoodi said Aisha was reached physical maturity, meaning physical maturity means she can handle penetration at the age of nine. Not that she menstruated or that she was post-pubescent. And this comes from Imam an nawawi on his commentary on Muslim. It is preferable for a guardian not to marry off his daughter when she is still young, unless there's a valid reason for that. And now what we said, again, almost done, man. I'll tell you when to unmute. It should be noted that Al-Shafi, Al-Shafi, and his companion said, it is preferable for fathers and grandfathers not to marry off a virgin until she reaches the age of puberty. That's preferable, but it's not commanded. Understand what he's saying here. And they ask her permission, lest she end up in a marriage that she dislikes. What they said does not go against the Hadith of Aisha because what they meant is that they should not marry her off before she reaches puberty. If there is no obvious interest to be served that they fear will be missed out on if they delay it. So yeah, you can delay it. You don't have to marry before puberty, but it's not necessary as in the Hadith of Aisha. In that case, it is preferable to go ahead with the marriage because the father is enjoined to take care of his child's interest and not to let a good opportunity slip away. So now you cannot mute me, young man. Are you okay with this religion? No, that's so disgusting. So why are you a Muslim, dude? I guess because we're the only thing I knew. What is it? It's, it was the only thing I really knew about. Yeah, you didn't know enough about it. Right? So why don't you announce this now and I'll start reading your Bible. You're getting your Bible Saturday, right? Yes. You're going to start. I'm going to tell you where to start. You get it. Are you listening? Yes. When you get your Bible, God, you're going to start the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. That one. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. That's in the New Testament. Okay. Okay. You're going to start. You're going to read about Jesus, the real Jesus, historical Jesus. You're going to read about this in the church. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Read, focus, understand, and ask God to show you the truth. But now I want to know, in light of hearing this garbage of Islam, oh, sorry, sorry, brother, in light of hearing this garbage, do you renounce Muhammad? Yes. No doubt about it? No doubt. So I want you to say with me, I bear witness that Allah of Islam is not God. I bear witness that Allah of Islam is not God. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the Antichrist and a false prophet. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the Antichrist and a false prophet. Amen. Now, Saturday, start reading the Gospels and Acts and get back to me about Jesus. Okay? Okay. Because I don't know if you're ready to confess Jesus because you don't know Jesus yet. But I want to show you some verses from Jesus. So mute yourself. I just want to show you some mute verses from Jesus, right? Okay, mute. Because I don't want to rush you to make a decision in accepting Jesus that you don't know because that's what the Muslims did to you. They deceived you. They deceived you. I don't want that to happen to you, but I'm going to show you the beauty about Jesus, all right? All right, now watch here. Look at the difference between Jesus and Muhammad. All right, watch here. There, righty then. Matthew 11, 27 to 30. Now watch the difference. Matthew 11, 27 to 30. We have someone else that wants to join me too, guys, so be patient. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son will reveal him. So Jesus is saying, God is his Father, and he is the Son of God, and only the Father knows the Son, and the Son alone knows the Father. This is why you need the Son to make the Father known to you. So then he makes an invitation to you. I alone 
can reveal the Father. I alone can tell you who God is. So then he says to you, this is his invitation to you, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Those of you who are tired of life and oppressed. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus is saying, you cannot know God unless you come to me and I make him known to you. And the true God is Father and Son and Spirit. Father is God and the Son is one with him. Now watch here. Jesus has promised. John 11, 20 to 27. I need you to listen, all right? John 11, 20 to 27. Martha, therefore, her brother Lazarus was dead. He was buried for four days. She's heartbroken. Her brother is dead. So Jesus comes to, to do a miracle. So Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Martha then said to Jesus, not to Allah or Muhammad, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you because God is his father. Now watch what Jesus says, Omar. Your name's not Omar. Deny that name. Jesus said to, you, to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again, the resurrection on the last day. At the last day, there'll be a resurrection. Omar, may the Holy Spirit help you to hear with open heart. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection life. I myself am the resurrection and I'm the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die, ever. That's his promise. You believe in me, you'll never die. Do you believe this? So he's now asking her, but he's asking you, Omar. He's now asking you. Omar, do you believe I'm the resurrection life? And if you give your life to me, you'll never die? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who comes into the world. Muhammad said, Jesus is not the Son. So Muhammad is dead and buried in hell because he contradict Jesus. Here's another one. John 14, verses 1 to 6. So notice the difference between the real Jesus, who you'll find in the Bible, with Muhammad and his God. John 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. God meaning his father. How do I know? My father. God is my father. I'm his son. I'm one with him. So believe in my father. And believe in me. Now look at his promise, Omar. He's going to promise you something. In my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. For who? Those who believe in him. Jesus is in heaven preparing mansions for those who believe in him. And when it's time for you to die, he will come and take you to your mansion. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Now look at Jesus' answer, Omar. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth. And the life. I am life itself. There is no life without me. And you're not going to get to my father and live with me without me. And you're not going to know what the truth is unless you come to me. No one comes to the father but through me. Now the final thing. John 14, 18 to 19. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. His promise. You won't be alone. I will be with you. The father will be with you. And the spirit will be with you. If you trust in him after a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will live also. Now, Omar, unmute yourself. Did you understand these passages? Did you unmute yourself? Unmute yourself. Okay. You I'm unmuted. Yes. I understood. Them. He said, God is his father. He's the son. He is the life. And if you believe in him, you'll never die because he'll preserve you and he'll take you to be with him and the Father in heaven and you can be a son of God. 
Let me show you the difference. You ready? I'm gonna mute you, and then I'll mute you. No, you don't need to mute yourself. Uh, can I mute? I thought I could. Anyway, mute yourself because I can't. Good. All right. Anyway, now I want you to see the difference between Jesus and Allah, and what Muhammad said about himself. Now watch here. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life. I am the resurrection of life. You'll never die if you believe in me. Now watch the difference with Muhammad and his God. Watch here. Okay, watch here. Watch the difference between Muhammad and his God. Watch here. Watch here. Okay. 46 verse 9. Watch here, Omar. 46 verse 9. Here you go. Say, this is Muhammad told to speak. I am no new thing among the messenger of Allah, nor know I what will be done with me or with you. I don't know what Allah is going to do with me or you. I do but follow that which is inspired in me, and I'm but a plain warner. And then his God says to Muhammad, Lo, thou wilt die, and lo, they will die. Now, Omar, unmute yourself. Do you see the difference between what Jesus and Muhammad said? I don't know what my God is going to do with me or you. And Muhammad's God said, you're going to die, Muhammad. Do you see the difference with Jesus? Jesus got the resurrection life. If you believe in me, you'll never die. Yes, I see the difference. Why are you going to follow a dead prophet whose God told him, you're going to die, and you don't know what I'm going to do with you, when you can follow the living Savior, the Almighty, who says, if you believe in me, you'll never die. Now mute yourself because I want to show you. Mute yourself. The highest relationship you can have with Muhammad's God, here it is, chapter 19, verses 88 to 93. Chapter 19, verses 88 to 93. Look at the relationship you have with Allah, Muhammad's God. And they say, the beneficent had taken unto himself a son. Assuredly, ye utter a disastrous thing. Whereby almost the heavens are torn and the earth is split asunder and the mountains fall in ruins that ye ascribe unto the beneficent a son. How dare you say he has a son when it is not meet for the majesty of the beneficent that he would choose a son. There is none in the heavens and the earth but cometh unto the beneficent as a slave. Lo, thou wilt die and lo, they will die. Now, unmute yourself, Omar, because I want to ask you a question. It says, all you are is a slave and Allah is your master. Right? Yes. Okay, now, you yourself going to show you what Jesus says you can be. You ready? Now mute yourself. That's all you are is a slave. Now look what the Bible says. Okay. Look what the Bible says. If all you are is a slave, you have no hope. John 1, 12 to 13. John 1, 12 to 13. But as many as received them, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Even to those who believe in his name. Who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Jesus says, I came to make you more than a slave. I came to make you a son, a daughter of my father. But you got to believe in my name and you got to receive me. Look what he says if, if you're a slave only. John 8, 30 to 36. John 8. 30 to 36, as he was speaking these things, many believed in him. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, then you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's seed, and have not yet been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say we will become free? Now look, Omar, what Jesus says. Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. And the slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does re remain forever. So Jesus says, if you're a slave, you have no guarantee of remaining in God's house forever. But now notice the good news. So if the son makes you free, you'll be free indeed. So Jesus said, I am the son who came to set you free from bondage to make you a child of my father so you can live with me and my father forever. Now, Omar, I'm going to ask you a question. Would you rather follow Allah and be his slave 
or follow Jesus and be a son of God and have God as your father? Answer that. Unmute yourself and tell me. I really need time to study the Bible, but, you know, so I don't just jump into it. But no, I would no, no. Much what would you son. choose? Not saying make the choice. What would you rather do? I would much rather be a son. Then you can't be a Muslim. Because you saw what Allah said, right? You can't be my son. You're my slave. That's terrible. Say it again. It's terrible. Sucks, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get your Bible, you're going to ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, you are real. Show me who the real Jesus is. And I'm going to start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Let's read those slowly, right? When you get it. Now, yes, yes. Once again, I'm not saying be a Christian because you need to know what you're getting into. But you're no longer a Muslim, right? Yes. No you sure you're no longer a Muslim? No. Okay, then one more time. I want you to renounce Islam. You ready? Yep. I bear witness. Bear Allah witness. of Islam is not God. Allah of Islam is not God. And I bear witness Muhammad is an antichrist, false prophet. And I bear witness that Muhammad is an antichrist, false prophet. You got it, brother. Now start asking the Holy Spirit to show you the true God and start reading your Bible, okay? Okay. All right, buddy. And you can reach me out if you have any other people. Okay. All right, buddy. Take care. You too. And have God as your father. Answer that. Unmute yourself and tell me. I really need time to study the Bible, but, you know, so I don't just jump into it. But no, I no, no. Much what would you choose? Not saying make the choice. What would you rather do? I would much rather be a son. Then you can't be a Muslim. Because you saw what Allah said, right? You can't be my son. You're my slave. That's terrible. Say it again? It's terrible. Sucks, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get your Bible, you're going to ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, you are real. Show me who the real Jesus is. And I'm going to start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Let's read those slowly, right? When you get it. Now, yes, yes. Once again, I'm not saying be a Christian because you need to know what you're getting into. But you're no longer a Muslim, right? Yes. No you sure you're no longer a Muslim? No. Okay, then one more time. I want you to renounce Islam. You ready? Yep. I bear witness. I bear Allah witness. of Islam is not God. Allah of Islam is not God. And I bear witness Muhammad is an antichrist. False prophet. And I bear witness that Muhammad is an antichrist, false prophet. You got it, brother. Accordingly, now start asking the Holy Spirit to show you the true God and start reading your Bible, okay? Okay. All right, buddy. And you can reach me out if you have any other people. Okay. All right, buddy. Take care. You too.